You actually think you're Ronaldo? I may not be Cristiano, but I can explain the physics behind his kick. Hi, I'm Nikhilesh. And I'm Kushal. We're the two Brock scientists. The football has seen many changes over the years. From the iconic Telstar, to the Jabulani, the Brazuka, and even the more recent Telstar 18, which was used in the World Cup last year. Now FIFA regulates the weight and the diameter of these balls. So these haven't really changed over the years. But then, what makes each ball so unique? Well, the outside pattern of course. Each of these balls has its own distinct seam distribution and small bumps on its surface which dictate its aerodynamic behaviour. I'm sure you've seen Messi take a free kick. He kicks the ball a little to the side and always imparts a spin, making the ball curl. Cristiano Ronaldo, on the other hand, has a slightly different approach. He strikes the ball flush in the centre, with very little follow-through, to make sure that it doesn't spin. This makes the behaviour of the ball a little unpredictable. That's the infamous knuckle ball. Both these styles are really effective, but they follow different aerodynamic principles. So let's break down Messi's kick. When a spinning ball is moving through the air, friction causes the air around the ball to be dragged along with it. When the oncoming flow meets the football, the side which is moving in the same direction as the spinning ball is accelerated, follows the curve and is deflected, while the side that is moving against the spinning ball slows down and keeps moving straight. Since the air has been deflected, according to Newton's third law, the ball is deflected in the opposite direction. This is called the Magnus effect. The explanation with Newton's third law is a nice and intuitive way of understanding the Magnus effect. But there's another way of understanding it. When the rotating ball drags particles with it, on the side where the oncoming stream is against the spin of the ball, the two particles oppose each other and create a region of high pressure, while the other side is a region of low pressure. This pressure difference manifests itself as a force. This means the more spin a player imparts, the more curl they get. The Magnus effect is used in most sports, from the top spin in tennis to the goal kick in football, where the ball stays in the air so long because the keeper imparts a backspin on the ball. Okay, now we know how a football curls. But the physics of a knuckle ball is a bit more intriguing. Remember, in a knuckle ball, you don't impart any spin. So you basically have a sphere moving through the air. All the action in this kick happens in a region very close to the ball. This is where the surface of the ball has a direct impact and the pattern of the ball has the most effect. When the air flows around the ball, the air in direct contact with the ball is stuck to its surface and is dragged along with the same velocity. This is the no-slip boundary condition. For a better understanding of the no-slip boundary condition, check out our video on it. The particles above the first layer are all subsequently dragged along by the viscosity of air. The region where the particles get dragged along is called the boundary layer. The boundary layer can either be laminar, meaning that the particles move in an orderly fashion, or they can be turbulent, meaning that the particles move chaotically. In a turbulent boundary layer, particles don't just interact with the subsequent layers, but because of the rapid mixing, they also interact with many different layers. This means a turbulent boundary layer is more energetic. The behavior of the boundary layer and its influence on the ball have been one of the most heavily researched topics in fluid mechanics. For a general sphere, this graph which shows the drag force versus the velocity of the ball gives an understanding of the flow characteristic. On the left is laminar flow and after a certain speed, the flow becomes turbulent. There are different graphs for a smooth sphere and a rough sphere. For a ball with seams, that is a rough ball, turbulence occurs at lower speeds. So when Ronaldo kicks a ball, it dances around in the critical regime, where there is a sharp change in drag for a small change in velocity. The seams play a role in deciding the behavior of the boundary layer. As you know, every footballer kicks the ball differently. And this leads to the unpredictable behavior of the ball. 
Now you know why a knuckleball is so dangerous. But we want to leave you with an interesting question. Kushal, tell me why the cricket ball swings. That is an interesting question. Stay tuned for our next video. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully now you know how to hit a knuckleball. Well, at least theoretically. And finally, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye! Bye.